seven it is o'clock, seven I'd like to call o'clock. the meeting to order. I will order call the meeting to order we before the adopting agenda. the agenda. I, I know, know it's, it's not important. It's, it's not practical that we have additions for the. Uh, if there are items to be added under 8.5 is correspondence that just came in but has to be discussed this evening so it would be a purple day awareness 8.5 10.6 we might restructure the, the way we do a committee reports we will put them uh, as minutes ahead, but Carl would like to add a r report for the Biosphere Reserve for 10.6 and for camera session that 12.4 is a personal item, staff item. So if it's proposed by Danny, second by Carl. All those in favor indicate by saying yes. Against, motion carried. Are there any items that you give you a conflict of interest situation? If not, we will go. We don't have any presentations this evening for adoption of minutes. Uh, uh, the ones January 18, 2017, the regular council meeting. Are there errors or omissions? If not, a motion is in order. Proposed by Neil, seconded by Hector. All those in favor indicate by saying yes. Against, motion carried. 4.2, the meeting of uh, February 1st, uh, council and committee meeting. Are there errors or omissions? Somebody make the motion. Uh, proposed by Carl, seconded by Eva. All those in favor indicate by saying yes. Against, motion carried. Number five, business arising from previous uh, council meeting. There's uh, dog hunting. This, there was uh, complaints regarding residents and commerces in Church Point regarding the dog hunting that was doing on behind the Roper Acadien. So we. Uh, met with Gordon Wilson and he spoke to the conservation agents and in that section s in the provincial laws safe for the utilization of guns we must maintain a distance of 182 meters when we hunt with a shotgun so if you look at the map that we have given you the uh, uh, conservation officer uh, says that the buildings are further than the 180 meters. So what is happening there is legal. We have also spoken to the residents and this like to s they say that when the hunting uh, season is open, even though the 2,000 meters doesn't look like much. This is, we respect the, the law. We were asked to look if there was anything in the law that says uh, if there's anything involving uh, schools or university and we'll see if this uh, involves this, but it is n for now, now that they have the approbation of the uh, owners to hunt there, they are respecting the law. Are there any questions? Uh, the, in the photo, in the no. Uh, according to the photo, it says that the area is, if they are in as on a boat, they would be inside these, uh, this area. This is the map that was given to us. And uh, Ellen spoke this is according to the map. That's if 
to make it to the farthest point on the lake which was inside the 200 meters that's why the map was drawn that way so I know there's a law that must be followed I think there's more to it than this so we'll we're looking there is a, a and another law that applies to universities we can certainly uh, <coughs> do a follow up with the uh, officer that has we've been dealing with and we we'll can do a follow up regarding the law or the closeness of universities but Miss, according to Mr. McGillery, the way it was presented to him, uh, it was confirmed to law, <coughs> but the proximity of university was not considered, so I don't know if there could be any changes brought to this. <coughs> so we'll be doing a follow-up, essentially. It's a provincial loss, so we did the contacts uh, through our MLA Gordon Wilson so we'll <coughs> be looking further for a solution number six uh, warden's activity report uh, January 23rd I had a meeting of the uh, the Bureau of the St. Anne's University on the 24th of January there was a phone conversation with the Association of Francophones in America this meeting there was myself, somebody from Moncton, Charlotte Down, and they're looking somebody for Newfoundland. It's just to coordinate the four provinces, French sector, to create a committee and an organization on Acadian zone. So it's quite big, and it's we don't know exactly how it's going to work. I think it was mentioned at the last meeting, the first arc is the tourism, we do want to organize tourism circuits, it is not just establishing a committee, we can make meetings about who is going to do the follow up with what types of resources to advance the project. The idea is that each province would have an organization with a provincial mandate and the ones of the suggestion that wasn't decided is that each province uh, in our here Natalie Robichaud works for this in Clare so that's one possibility so it could be done uh, using the ready it is not decided yet there's no conclusion made yet it's uh, we're just trying to invent something but more or less they have as asked uh, our ac Acadi zone so it's kind of us to create the structure that the other zones can more or less copy because it might take a while to do this but it's going ahead the 30th of uh, January there's a meeting of Harborside Lodge at Yarmouth uh, board of directors 4th of February uh, Council, Governor's Council of the University of St. Anne, 7th of February, a session uh, to discuss the role of um, Nathalie Robichaud of the Rede, what, what, uh, what projects she should be working on and what she could be working on. There were quite a few people at this session. On the 9th of February, there was a meeting of the LNO Committee of the REN. This was to approve the addition of the municipality of Barrington and to go through the intermunicipal agreement, which you have in your um, package this evening. 
on the 15th of February there was the opening of the uh, Canada 150 celebrations and uh, Mr. Como was there for the municipality. Uh, is there anything to add? That was good. Uh, I did a small uh, speech. Uh, Marion Gauvin spoke about the Arcadian flag. There were four or five students from l the university. There was Gate, who is from the, the International Society of Students. There was uh, Nathalie Robichaud, who spoke about the Acadian Festival. Her job is to find uh, funds for the 150th anniversary, which will be part of the Acadian Festival. The Federal and the province will contribute. There will be activities during those during that period, and uh, it all went very well. Are there any questions? There being none, we move to seven official statements from members of council. Yes, I would like to take the opportunity to uh, uh, congratulate Denise Como des Hotels, who worked for the Courrier of the Nouvelle Ecosse for over 20 years. She's done uh, exceptional work. The Courrier has existed since 1937. It has allowed French-speaking people to read the news during that period. Denise, for a long number of years, has made efforts to ensure that the Courrier is a quality newspaper. So I th move that the council write to her a uh, letter a thank you letter for all these years of service. Are there any other presentations? We move on to 8. 8.1 thank you letter from Catherine Petipa. This letter is Dear um, Committee for Recruiting Doctors, thank you very much for the package that you sent to me. It is very much appreciated during exam time cordially okay. this was refers to October and November when the recruitment committee sent a care package to the students in uh, medicine there's uh, dried fish uh, uh, dried seaweed and uh, we so we thought that it was important to add this note. 8.2, the Société of the Jeu de l'Acadie, the 41st fina final. This is a letter that was we, reserved, uh, we received <coughs> last year as well to see if there would be a municipality who would be interested in being uh, the host for the 41st uh, finals of these games. There is an invitation for the municipalities who are interested in uh, <coughs> participating. They should so indicate in Petit Rocher. Um, we decided last year not to uh, uh, submit our candidacy because we don't have the requisite infrastructure. So what I would like to know is whether uh, we would like once again uh, not to submit our candidacy because of the lack of infrastructure. Is there any discussion on this matter? Uh, Ron, I, I, a track and field track would be necessary. What else? There's a list in the letter, if I recall, there w it's mainly uh, the track and field that is the problem. There's nothing t to prevent us from entering into a partnership with some other municipality like Argyle, potentially, but if Claire wants to do this by itself, we do not have sufficient infrastructures. I don't have the list in front of me. The other item which might be a problem 
is that is that a lot of uh, the activities would take place around the schools and right now uh, it's a little doubtful exactly what will be able to be done around the schools. By the time all of this comes around on the calendar we don't know what uh, the situation will be. In a cl near future we should discuss this and, dis and determine what is missing in from the infrastructure and to see whether we could have those infrastructures available in order to uh, host the games because uh, uh, at the present time we don't really know what we lack we wouldn't want to pass up this chance uh, indefinitely there's it it is good for the economic impact on the community it would be about 1.2 million and another 400,000 for the province so it would be quite interesting economic fallout if we could have the games are there any other questions it's a comment I participated in a number of these final finals and at all the places where we went it was not just in the village but around the village and sometimes it was quite a distance and sometimes it was quite a long distance to go to, to have the buildings like gyms. The Brian's question is that well uh, track and field is certainly one of the problems last year they built in Karakata uh, a uh, track and field uh, facility for three hundred thousand dollars it will of course be used for other things there was the uh, velodrome for bicycles Th uh, there are a number of things that we don't have we can manage like other places. Thank you. Are there any other comments? Uh, we go to 8.3 uh, RCMP costs 2017-18. It's in English.
questions. If now we go to 8.4 proposal for Metagen sidewalks repaving and repairs by Russell Titus. This letter has been English. Questions or comments on this, Carl? This is that it's for when they pave the road. It's not us that will pay for this, but the sidewalk we pay for the sidewalk. Uh, the council had asked a while back to look into the possibility to extend sidewalks in the municipality what would be the places that would be prioritized and this uh, study is being done now Jody Como is doing this and Jody is a current for the he knows about the Metagan problems he also spoke with companies who uh, and the province regarding uh, the paving for next year and there would be the possibility to do it all at the same time so he will give us some uh, estimates and there is also there are also discussions regarding to uh, widen the sidewalks from four to five feet but there's also question regarding the material that we use to make these presently is asphalt. There is also the possibility to put cement, but that is costly. So this studying is being done now. So we we'll can give you more information a bit further in the future to prepare our sidewalks and also get a policy regarding what uh, other sidewalk construction could be done in the future. I imagine that he would have to determine also if we can uh, make the park lane wider. Is this legal? That is something uh, I don't know if the province would, according to Jody, he wasn't certain, but he thinks so, that the parking lane could be made wider. I know he also looked. Uh, also spoke to certain people to try to see how much it would cost per meter whether it would be done with asphalt or cement concrete so the reason I'm saying this is if the province who does paving if they m make the uh, park lane wider it shouldn't cost too much more. It's a good question, but I cannot say for sure what the answer is. Normally, so Jody will find the answers normally when they're paving. They can uh, repair uh, if they
they have to uh, to change the medium. It's a different story. Do we know if if the paving job that's going to be done? Do we know if it's going to go over the sidewalk now? Are they going to pave further than the end of the sidewalk? Let's say they don't go up to the sidewalk. I see what you mean. We don't have any details how far the paving will be done, how long it will be for next, for this summer. I don't have that information now. Let's let's say if from the post office to the end of the sidewalk, it will be the old one. Yes. You're talking about the uh, Metagen post office. So if there's stuff in front of the post office, there would be one part of the sidewalks that's old and another part that would be new. Would be better to do the whole thing at once. Evo and then Brian. Is the... The curb, is that a... If they replace the curve, it doesn't. It's not the municipality who pays. So there were no municipal expenses last year. The distance the for paving is on the five-year plan of the province. I've I've seen it, but I don't know how far it goes. It goes. It change. It can change also. Often. Are there any other questions, Hector? when they pave the new part will they put a pipe if to uh, I didn't understand I don't have the, that information if the from what I've seen is on the place that there's there that there's no uh, sidewalk. It will make the other side a bit wider. These are all good questions that Stefan can discuss with Jody. So we'll have to do a bit more research. We will ask Jody these questions and look into them. Are there any other questions? If not out to 8.5, the purple day, this is Council is in agreement. I can contact the uh, association and uh, tell them that we are interested in uh, participating. Danny, I'm in agreement. So you will contact them with the names. Number nine, director report of the CAO. These are a lot of the projects that I talk to you about regularly. There's the sewer treatment plant at Church Point, the uh, ultraviolet light system has been received. It's compatible with our other um, uh, plants in Matagan and elsewhere. The specs for the 12 by 16 building have been are complete and will be going to tender shortly. 
in a couple of weeks. Uh, we're also discussing with KRC controls concerning the design of the stations. Uh, at three stations, one in Smuggler's Cove, uh, one at the Matagan Connector on Highway 1, and uh, third at Matagan Wharf. Concerning the Veterans Center, renovations upstairs have begun. Work is progressing as on schedule. Electrical and plumbing are done. We expect to uh, finish the work in three or four weeks and there's been no uh, unforeseen problems so far. Concerning use of the room, a number of groups have uh, sought out other venues for their activities temporarily because of the dust and noise. But other associations continue uh, just the same, and the room is open to the public. Concerning the uh, display on the road, I, as mentioned at f previous meetings, we have uh, ordered one from the Computech car company in Shelburne. Estimated delivery will be in mid-March. Mid -March with an extra two weeks for installation. We esteem that by the end of March that the sign will be uh, in place and the amount, the amount is, it is uh, expected to be $28,182 plus HST installation included. Concerning rural internet, uh, there's a few updates. We're working with uh, Digby, Yarmouth, Argyle and Barrington. Each municipality has contributed $20,000 to this uh, initial planning phase. This has allowed us to hire a, a project manager who is working with the REN team and the municipalities. The contract was given to CETUS Advisory Inc. The CAOs uh, uh, met and we um, uh, put out a call for tenders to uh, uh, service providers. On the 2nd of February, the federal government announced that the application deadline for the Connect to in Innovate program was extended from March 13th to April 20. We expect to apply. So this later date will allow us to work on our application. In spite of this extension of the final date, the committee has decided to put nonetheless the date of February 3rd on our submission. That being said, our, the RFP, uh, we only received one proposal and we evaluated it and and declined declined it there wasn't what we were looking for that being said in terms of the next steps Evan Nemeth who's an employee of the Wren and Greg O'Mala of CETUS Advisory have had discovery conversations with internet service providers to determine the next steps. That being said, we have a meeting scheduled with Evan and Greg and uh, CAOs of municipalities and that will be on the 21st of February, which is next Tuesday. 
to review their discoveries to date and what are the possible options for the moment. The next two projects I will talk to you about are the John Thibodeau Road Sewer and the Cultural Hub Project for the CIFA building in Comoville. These will be discussed uh, um, in camera because there are financial repercussions. <coughs> for the 250th anniversary of Claire, uh, application for funding has been uh, submitted for $200,000. The program deadline was January 31st. The this was a bit tight, but the employees uh, were very cooperative. The uh, application was submitted before the uh, deadline, and uh, the c municipality will be contributing $25,000 of the 200000 concerning the Grand Fondo for information. We've had a prestige, a nomination for a prestige award from the Canadian Sport Tourism Alliance. This is a national award. We were nominated in the category of Sport Tourism Organization of the Year. Other nominees in this category, there were two, Sport Burnaby of Burnaby, BC, and Sport Hosting of Vancouver. The recipients will be announced on Tuesday, the 21st of March, during the uh, 11th Prestige Awards ceremony in Ottawa. So this is uh, an honor for us. Uh, we have put articles on the uh, social media and there was an article in the Vanguard mentioning this. The organization which nominated us was Events Nova Scotia. And we're very appreciative of, for that. Concerning the Cape St. Mary Lighthouse, following discussion with ACOA yesterday, we have submitted the concept paper for the Cape St. Mary Lighthouse. The total cost would be $141,816 as submitted. Of that amount, ACOA would uh, contribute $64,816 being 46% uh, and the municipal contributing con contribution would be $77,000. This is still a concept but but we hope that we will have the permission to go ahead with a formal application. Con finance the municipality remains in a good financial position. Beginning on February 14, 2017, the mi municipality had $8,581,854.18 in revenues and in expenses $7,603,638.61 for a net income of $978,000. $215.57. As of February 14th, the municipality has a balance of $1,754,089.28 in its general account and a total reserve balance of $2,932,444.99. Of this amount, the operating reserve includes $430. $35,352.92. The capital reserve, $1,935,318.14. The landfill closure reserve, $315,060.89. And for the gas tax reserve, uh, $246,713.04. So we're in uh, good shape financially. At the end, turn, uh, the, I'm going to go to the following meetings, uh, the discussion with the 
our CEO meeting for regarding rural internet on February 21st, our bylaw committee meeting on February 23rd, and the UNSM special meeting on accountability and transparency on February 24th, 2017. I will be go with the warden. But this is open to anybody who wants to go to these meetings. But uh, we have registered. I think it's a good session because they want to discuss certain policies that will uh, similar in all the municipalities throughout the province. So all municipalities would be following the same rules. We're having mm, discussions now with the Department of Municipal Services and uh, we're discussing with the municipal and astronomy administrators to develop policies that would be common and there will be s uh, sessions f to inform you to s uh, enforce uh, better practices on the way we run the municipalities. S are there any questions? Maybe I could mention for the, the award of the grand photo when you, we look at the different categories, and w but there are events there like the Briar. There are categories. There, some of them are national associations. They're high profile. Uh, it's quite impressive to see the caliber of the nominations for the different categories. So we're it's interesting for us to be uh, in this in the race. Uh, next we go uh, committee reports, uh, building permits report, Danny. There was, did you have a planning advisory committee? <coughs> and advisory committee, police advisory, a meeting, waste check, do you have any meeting? There was a meeting that was cancelled because of the weather. 10.6 uh, Biosphere Reserve. Do you have, have to make a report on this? I went on February 2nd at a meeting, a teleconference with the group of our committee, Southwestern Biosphere Reserve Association, and we so interest expressed by a group that does filming from Ontario TVO Ontario TV that will make a product turn a production that will be called Striking ba Balance. They have already done a series like series one last year and now they're gonna start series two they do filming on biosphere reserve across Canada through UNESCO uh, so here Southwest Nova is part of this UNESCO endeavor what their it's educational scientific and cultural organization this is so we're part of this so what they want to do here is come back to f film uh, series 2 they have already made 8 episodes
episodes of 50 minutes each that included a bit the west of Canada mostly so they they want to come they've done other parts of Nova Scotia but they want to come in southwest Nova the narrator of the film Jim Cody who new rodeo program you might know him I think it's somebody who's well known they will come if they come it would probably be a in the spring of 2017 or at the beginning of 2018 it will depend on what they want to film if they're interested f to film the lobster fishery with the uh, tides so it have to do it during the season so it will depend what they're looking for it will be four stages two they will come once to assess and do interviews with people from the area to see what they're gonna be able to film and the second time if they come back they will actually do the shooting so it will be about 20 days and all so their interests are for example the Acadian culture the tides, St. Anne University, because they have a project there that interests them, and also the region of UNESCO on a wider basis. They will also film in Yarmouth or anything that will interest them uh, regarding the biosphere. So it is it uh, an occasion for us it doesn't cost anything for us the funding comes from Parks Canada and the company itself who's doing the shooting S so it's an occasion for tourism to show our region to the the rest of Canada and it's free for us they took statistics of their series just in Ontario for one week they showed a program f <coughs> every day for a week they have reached 1,750,000 people who looked at the programs in one week so it's a lot of people and this was during the World Series there's still a lot of people who looked at their series they have uh, had received funding to make a mission in French also if they come here to film in Claire they will do it in French and in English so if there's somebody who's interested to see what they have done there's a few clips of what they have already done it's on a you can google striking balance in one word .ca and I've looked at it and it's very well made and it's impressive what they've done so it shows the quality of their work so we received a letter that f follows our phone call and they're very interested to come here to do something here in the our area so our part 
part of UNESCO here is the Toby Attic. I just wanted to make you aware of this project and we hope that they will be coming. Thank you very much, Carl. Are there any questions or comments? Thank you. We now go to new business motion to approve the code of conduct. There's not much to add. At the last meeting, I presented the recommendations. These uh, recommendations were incorporated in the document, which was uh, reviewed by our lawyer and approved. So this evening, we'll asking you to approve the new code of conduct uh, formally as presented. Carl, I move that the municipality of the District of Clare adopt the new code of conduct for the Municipal Council as presented. Seconded by Hector, is there a discussion on the motion? There being none, all in favor? Against? Carried. 11.2, a motion to approve the uh, policy for naming roads. This uh, policy was presented at the last meeting. We had a discussion on it. The only change which I was asked to make was to look at the 51% of residents who would need to approve the name change. We thought that this uh, figure was low. Uh, I talked with Gary Sullivan who is the person responsible for these processes for road name changing uh, concerning whether we could go from 51 to 66 percent of the residents on the road. F according to Gary, there's no problem with that at all. It, it's up to us to uh, determine the percentage. So in the new policy, we changed the 51% figure to 66 to reflect our discussion uh, at the last meeting. Other than that, there were no other comments or revisions that I was asked to make, and I have not received any email from uh, the councillors asking me to modify the policy. For that reason, uh, I would now ask you for a motion to adopt the new road naming policy. I move that the municipality of the District of Clare adopt the new road naming policy as presented. Seconded by Carl. Is there a discussion? I think that this will be uh, an important policy. It will be uh, uh, posted on the uh, website for people to be able to consult it. This will give th them a better idea of what the work is. This is uh, a lot of this reflects uh, good work. If there is no other discussion, all in favor say aye. Against? Carried. 11.3, motion to approve to hire s lifeguards for the Mavalette Beach. This is following on the letter from Marianne Titus. She's in the Department of Recreation uh, uh, by interim. She wants us to approve the amount of 960 $961.03, including uh, HST, for the period from July 1st to August 27th. This would provide two lifeguards uh, during the weekends for the period uh, mentioned. The amount has increased by about 5% compared to last year. The reason for this is uh, wages 
but the wages are not uh, dictated by the municipality but determined by the province. So we're talking about $9,661 tax included and it's only a few uh, uh, dollars more. Danny. Is there a seconder? Seconded by Evo. Is there a discussion? There being none, all in favor? Against? Carried. 11.4. Ren, Intermunicipal Agreement. Essentially, basically, the, uh, the Ren uh, has been, has revised the inter municipal agreement. This was presented at the LNO committee. The main reason to revise the agreement I is to include Barrington. You will have uh, received an additional page which describes the financing formula to uh, calculate the contribution for each municipality, which, which is different. The formula is based on the population, and another scenario would have been equal contributions from each municipality, and the third scenario would be on the assessment value within the municipality. In the final calculation, we uh, uh, put 20% for equitable distribution and 40% for population and 40% for the uh, assessment. What does that mean for Claire? In 2016-17, our, our uh, f fees were 52,000 odd with the inclusion of Barrington for next year the contribution of Clare would be reduced to forty five thousand six hundred twenty one dollars which is a uh, saving of six to seven thousand dollars which is a good thing as for the document the revisions which are proposed from what I have seen, it's mainly to reflect the inclusion of Barrington as a member of the REN, and the document as such, from what I was able to see, cons is pretty... W this was part of the meeting of the LNA, where all the mun municipalities have two members. We went through those changes. Uh, when we took the opportunity to clean up the agreement a little bit, the mostly uh, linguistic changes, except for the part which uh, adds Barrington to the agreement. We went through, uh, through it change by change and everyone was at ease with the changes. And in your document, the changes are in red, and you can see that these were not major modifications. All the municipalities which have signed this document will have, there are seven of them, are asked to pass a formal motion at a meeting of council uh, committing them to sign the agreement. So that's what we would ask you to do this evening. So we would require a motion whereby the municipality of Clare commits itself to sign the intermunicipal agreement for the REN. Brian, I move that the municipality of Clare 
uh, commit itself to the process of signing a new agreement. The new agreement including Barrington. A seconded by Danny. Is there discussion on this? Uh, there being none, all in favor? Against? Motion carried. I have a question. Will, will Barrington participate we, uh, in the high Barrington speed internet project? In yes. They are already around the table. This is a question that interests them very much. And their council in January approved a motion uh, to that effect, as the other municipalities did. So 12 in camera session. Before we go into camera, I would like to go through the points which will be discussed. 12.1, sewer extension project, John Thibodeau Road. 12.2, cultural hub project, 12.3, Scotia Recycling Limited, and 12.4, staff. That being said, for everyone uh, who are listening to us uh, at home, uh, good evening, and we need a motion to go in camera. Uh, proposed and seconded. All in favor? Against? Carried. Good evening.